Good morning and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. It is Saturday, December the 19th, our final uh, day before the fourth week of Advent. And we're focused here on joy. And um, if you're just joining us, this is uh, a continuation of yesterday's Food for Thought where we are talking about the seven habits of joy as uh, published by the Christian Herald. Now, um, we're on number four, the fourth habit of joy is that of love. And I know that uh, love and joy are different things, but they're connected very closely together. H- have you ever noticed when you're down how your thoughts seem to circle endlessly about yourself? Well, join the club. Sometimes when I get down, it's all about me. We may be sad because we're disappointed in ourselves or because we've been wronged or because we don't have the blessings that other people seem to have. But uh, when I look at it, life this way, do you see how self-focused it is? Love like praise takes our focus off of ourselves and puts it on God and others. That's why love's so important to joy. When our thoughts are orbiting around planet me, then uh, joylessness joylessness will be uh, my faithful companion. And it's been said that humility is not thinking less of ourselves, but thinking of ourselves less. Humility plus God and others first um, brings joy to us. And uh, I I don't want to underemphasize this. The more we love God, the more we love others, the more joyful we will be. The fifth uh, habit of joy, joyful people, I guess you could say, the fifth habit of joyful people is lament. Um, Scholars estimate that two-thirds of the Psalms in Scripture contain some form of lament. In these Psalms, the songwriter wrestles for understanding and deliverance. And even the biblical character of Job, when we look at him and his life, he is a model of a lamenter. A notable feature of the book of Job is that uh, the suffering uh, Job, combative Job, is the only person who actually talks to God. All of his other comforters only talk about God. But Job, in the middle of his worst circumstances, despite all of his incautious and caustic words, ultimately receives God's blessing because Job was God's friend, and friends can be honest with one another. And in the midst of Job's deepest sorrow, there was joy. And ironically, for some of us, talking to God is about the last thing that we feel like doing when we are downcast or when we're going through the worst circumstances that uh, you can think of. Could our lack of joy be telling us that we have not because we ask not? Or perhaps we have not because we do not trust that God has our circumstances in his hand. We don't trust enough to prevail on him to the point of testing the bounds of our relationship with him as Job did. God likes it when his children pour their hearts out on him. And sometimes when we don't feel right, we need to talk to God about that. And joy ultimately is the result of having that relational relationship depth with God. The sixth habit of joyful people is that um, in the middle of the fight, we can have joy. We can fight and still have joy. The Apostle Paul reminds us that our warfare is not against flesh and blood. And we see this in Ephesians 6.10 where it says, "Our finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You see, the devil has an interest in keeping Christians joyless. He knows that the joy of the Lord is the Christian's strength and that the joy of the Lord is also a powerful witness to others and a testimony of God's power and love in a believer's life. So the devil will be very happy to deprive us of it if he can. While every occasion of sadness that we look at is not a result of satanic attack or oppression. I personally experienced times when 
I've prayed for God's deliverance or spoke directly to the dark powers that are attacking me in the name of Jesus. And shortly after I've experienced the parting of the clouds and, and joy in the place of gloom. Well, another habit of joyful people, I think, is just that, to think. Thinking. Thinking is a habit of joyful individuals. Paul instructs us, brothers and sisters, uh, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. What is uh, playing in our minds will also affect our level of joy. Paul exhorts us to consider carefully the things that we read and watch and places where we allow our minds to grow. Sinful, unbelieving thoughts drain away our energy. Wholesome thinking promotes lightness of heart. If we are serious about finding joy, we need to carefully discern where our minds are going, what's trending in our minds. Call these things, my friends, the seven habits of joy. The seven habits of joyful people, if you will. Think of them as tools in a toolbox that God has given you. God's made them available to you because he really does want you to have joy. And like any father, he likes to see his children smile even in the midst of the storm.